Hi guys, Daz here, and uh, today I've got a long overdue review, um, and this one's of Watchmaker. Um, it's a great app for Android Wear, and basically it's uh, the ability to install and design um, custom watch faces. Uh, so before I show you all the massive store, etc., um, I'm gonna show you this cool watch face, and this is one that I've created recently, um, and it's pretty special for a number of ways. First of all, um, you'll see that on the dimmed mode, um, we've got very, very dull hands. So a watchmaker allows me to entirely customize the watch face, including the dimmed mode. And so that's one bug that I've managed to overcome. And on the on face, you'll see that I've got a huge amount of information and I've got some really cool dyna dynamic elements. You'll also see that um, some of the elements on here are brighter than others based on their um, importance. And basically everything is customizable. I've got this set up perfect for me. Um, and I, I found Watchmaker to be a real pleasure to use. So before um, I talk too much about actually constructing your own watch face, just to show you the interface, you'll see that it basically is the Spotify interface, but that's not a bad thing. You see we've got our menu over here, that's fine. In the sense here, we've got some featured faces and that's what it comes with. And then we've got the ability to um, produce a new watch face, import a watch face, or request, or to access the beta channel, which is a, a Google Plus community. And so you'll see here in the community itself, um, there's an awful lot of uh, watch faces being published and uploaded by other users. There's also a really good help community here as well. I've got some answers and questions regarding um, code and custom tags just to make it so that the watch face does exactly what you want. So if we go over to my watches, you'll see that I've actually got multiple copies of this same watch face as well as some that I've downloaded. Um, it's a good idea as you go along to duplicate your faces because basically when you're editing you're always editing the live copy and so if you want to take a backup that's pretty much the only way you're going to be able to do it. So if I take it to the top you'll see that we've got multiple versions of the same one and it basically saves the screenshot each time. Some with some rings, some with without rings and again like I say we've got some um, custom ones as well that have been created by other people. So let's start by actually um, installing somebody else's watch face. Um, this one I downloaded from Face Repo, and this is actually a face of watch face that does actually work with Watchmaker. So it's important to note that Watchmaker will import uh, Facer watch faces, however, it doesn't work the other way around. Watchmaker does seem to be the um, main competitive paper, Facer in the moment, but it's uh, clearly the winner. It's got a lot more customization, and developers really, really active. And so it's simply a case of pressing the green button. I press that, it says send into wear, and because Watchmaker is already selected on my watch, obviously, as a face, you'll see that I have the, the face already there. It's a good looking face straight away, straight out of the box, and uh, if I turn it into dimmed, you'll see that it's already set up a dimmed as well, so that's not actually a bad example. Now let's say that this watch face wasn't exactly to my uh, taste, customizing is really, really simple. You hit the customize, and then you'll see that all the elements that make up the watch face are here, and what we're able to do is then go into these particular elements and actually customize them, move them around. If we're going to be editing elements, it makes sense to do it on the watch face that I've created here. So when we've hit customize, you'll see that we're now in our panel and I've got a lot of elements actually. Um, this one's called review copy is a name and I get to that by clicking that little button there. But other than that, I'm simply clicking on these elements here to be able to select them on the screen. Now I can actually select them as well by touching the screen. Moving elements around is just as simple as actually selecting them and moving them. You lose a little bit of control because you're using big fingers to do that. If you make a mistake, you are able to correct it using this back button. And if your big fingers cause a problem, um, you can do what I do and you can actually get yourself a cheap stylus and that will allow you to be a bit more specific uh, selecting the elements. So let's just talk a little bit about the face that I've created here. And so you'll see that, if I just go back a second. So you'll see that in the center here, um, I've got large uh, numbers. Uh, for the time. Um, I've got the date here followed by a battery reading. In the center I've got um, the next appointment um, that's going to be taking place. I'm actually currently within that now. And at the bottom here you'll see that I've actually created um, the current temperature, um, the location and the weather conditions and in the brackets there I've actually put tomorrow's uh, current temp tomorrow's expected temperature and condition there as well. Just above I've put the high and the low um, temperature for today just so that I've got a, an idea of the range. Now if we look at the text here you'll see that actually you can kind of see through it and so you're actually able to edit the opacity of text and in behind there you've got the orange line. Um, now that orange line you can see it's matching up to the hour and the minute hands there and I'm able to build all of that using simple geometric shapes within the application itself. So let's take one for example we've got the minute hand here 
um, and so the minute hand's in the very foreground and so you'll see that to do that I've actually created um, a minute hand here out of just a, a solid line. Now you'll see that it's off slightly and that's because of the positioning and me positioning it in the center. It seemed to be the only way that I could get it to actually display so that it was pivoting. Um, it may be that I've done that bit wrong but it certainly works for now. And so we've got the foreground and now in the background I want this line to be drawn um, and that's one of these um, circles here. So if you think of it as layers, I've got a uh, large orange circle in the background but then what I've done is produced another circle which is actually black and, and I've covered the orange one entirely. Now what I've also done is I've used the segment shader and you go into there and what you're able to do is then specify a value and there's a huge list of values and you can apply these to all the different elements. Um, now what I've obviously done is a, is a time and so I've hit time and I've used the rotation value for minute hand there and so that's done all the work for me. And so you'll see I'm then able to set the opacity of that black circle based upon the time. And so when it's in range, it's 50. When it's out of range, it's 100. And so that's what I've set. And so that's why basically we've got 50 degrees um, opacity on this area here as it goes around. And we've also got 100% opacity, which means, you know, entirely um, invisible there. Now, let's say I wanted to delete this particular layer just to show you. It's a long press. And now I can actually edit things in here. I can, this is where I go to duplicate a layer but it's also where I go to delete. And by deleting, you'll see that that's now left that, that partial circle at least there. And then there's some other elements covering it. And of course that's because those exist um, on higher layers. Effectively, I've used the same principle on the outside here, but you can see this one's actually working for um, seconds as opposed to uh, minutes or hours. In the middle, I've also been able to add a Wi-Fi element. Um, there's actually a huge range of elements that we can add here. And so we use this plus button here just to select elements and this is where I select text or shapes or backgrounds for which there's already some in there or you can actually load in your own ones. But there's some elements that are already created for certain conditions such as weather, um, battery, Wi-Fi strength, etc. And so let's say I wanted to add a, a weather element. It's very, very simple. I can create weather. I can add that there and you can see that it's, it's added it to the top layer and it's very large. I can easily maneuver it there. I'm able to change the position very simply just using these buttons here. The size can easily be changed just using these buttons as well, or remember I can type in as well. I can also link this um, or unlink it to produce skewed results. Opacity is one of the areas that I've been using a lot. So you see it was set for 100, but by playing with opacity and layers, you can actually have some really nice effects to your watch face. Importantly, just underneath um, alignment, is display and you can see that the weather is set for always in the moment now, this is very important so this is where we start designing the watch face so that it reacts in different ways uh, based upon whether it's dimmed or uh, or not now one of the ways that i've actually been able to get some fantastic battery life by using this application is um, by making use of the always and dimmed modes and so display you can see uh, this particular watch hand i've got selected is set for bright only but i'm actually able to change that between always and dimmed and what I've effectively done is I've produced um, an alternative um, what hand, so one for always on and one for dimmed, and this one's actually in gray as opposed to white. And so on that POLED screen of my watch, um, that's gonna display uh, slightly differently. It's, gonna, it's not gonna be as bright, um, and I'm finding that's giving me about 2.5% uh, battery usage uh, per hour on average per day, um, which has given me almost to two days of, of battery, which is, which is fantastic. To test between day and night mode, we've got a button for that. And also just to test the interface even more, we can um, change the time, um, effectively add a multiplier, and that'll let the hands work through all the different actions that they may want to, that you may want to check to the extreme. Now, if any time we want to push this to our watch, it's really simple. We, hit, we can hit that button there. And you'll see that now I've got this kind of weird hybrid that we've just created. Um, we've got the new on mode, and because I didn't edit that weather, what we should find is upon turning this to dimmed, we should have my darkened watch face with the weather icon there. Now I have been reverted back to uh, my previous version and just setting that to, back to the watch face. You can see that the hands on uh, my live uh, are larger than the hands on my dimmed. And I wanted that to be a feature because I didn't want the hands always crossing over in the same area. People have obviously expressed some concern about uh, burn-in or persistent images. 
I haven't found those myself, but I'm certainly not willing to risk it. And so I want to try and minimize the amount of time that those hands cross over. And of course, in the centerpiece, that's got to be one of those times. And so on the on the full ver version, which you wouldn't see all the time anyway, I've got the little um, black circle there in the center that shows the Wi-Fi. But at the same time, um, on the dimmed, you see that I've cut that off even more. So I'm using even less battery uh, throughout the day. And you can see there the difference between the on and the and the dimmed is quite significant. One of the caveats about Watchmaker, um, and I, I'm assuming this is a bug, but when you try and swipe an application out of the way, you'll see that there is a glitch where it, it takes a little bit of time to get back into the watch face. And also sometimes when moving between um, dimmed and always on or always on and dimmed, there can be a little bit of a delay uh, when I need to think about it. It's not all the time, but it does happen every so often. So I did mention Face Repo. So Face Repo is really a facer um, website or application. Um, but I'm obviously able to go into and download uh, round faces. There's a number of watch faces here. They're very simple uh, to, to view and to download. It's just a case of downloading. You'll download it to um, wherever you want it to download it to. So I'm just gonna download this watch face. It's gonna go into my download folder. Um, and then what I'm able to do is go and import that in the application itself. Remember that option is found at the bottom here. For a free application, it's clearly amazing. Um, it's a great framework um, for producing watch faces for the watch. It, uh, the community effort's been fantastic. Everyone sharing tags and sharing uh, bits of script to do certain things. And more and more of those are getting added to the uh, watchmaker itself to make life easier. There's compasses, uh, there's icons and text elements. You can get bars that go from one side to the other. Anything you can think of, including changing backgrounds by time, changing color. You, you, can, you can do most of it with an equation, but they're adding these features directly in um, to make it even easier. And so other than maybe some more performance tweaks, maybe some masks to allow us to change the opacity of certain areas, maybe more font packs, uh, the ability to uh, change color of text elements, etc., more easily. All of these things will make this easier to use and better. There's a few little bugs in the undo button that I found where it's, it's produced unexpected results, but all in all, Fantastic application. Um, you're gonna get more time of using Watchmaker than you are pretty much anything else you do on your Android Wear device. And once you start, I promise you, you won't be, uh, you won't be buying watch faces anymore because you can just produce them yourself exactly how you want them. Finally, another really cool feature is once you've built this really cool watch face that you, you, know, you want everybody to see it, there's a really nice little option built into here. I'm able to create an animated GIF, which I'm gonna do right now. If you'd like this watch face, I've got a little bit of a competition or a bit of a challenge. I want this video to get 25 likes. If uh, I can get 25 likes, and that's just those little thumbs up, um, I'll release this, then you don't have to start from fresh like I had to, and you can download this watch face, and then edit it to your heart's content, maybe improve on it and share it back to me, and that'd be cool. So thanks a lot, guys. I um, hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, Watchmaker's gonna be uh, a big part of your life and a big part of your Android Wear life as soon as you download it, so get yourself ready, pour yourself a coffee, and um, get ready to enjoy the application. So share anything that you've built in the comments below on this video, uh, and I look forward to seeing you again for the next video soon. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.